And my favorite player growing up was Wyatt too. Uh, Derek Jeter, obviously because he's a great leader and a great player, and Orlando Hudson because he was a lower round draft pick, and I mean he's been an all-star in the major leagues. Two guys, uh, if you're especially a middle infielder, great guys to model yourself after. Derek Jeter, a legend. He's going into the Hall of Fame. And Orlando Hudson, I think Aaron Fields nailed it. Lower round guy that has just made the most of his ability, and now he's a solid major leaguer. Yeah, very true. Derek Jeter played against played against Orlando Hudson, even played with Orlando Hudson on Team USA. One of the best players that I've played with up the middle. I mean, I played with Omar Vizquel, yep. but this kid is very outstanding. And Aaron Fields could be that guy, uh, you know, a lower round draft pick. Still has a chance because he's got the uniform on. Yep, we'll have to wait and see where he goes. Welcome back to the show. Time now for this week's Focus on the Future. And here's a guy that we've been following since he was drafted by the Indians a couple of years ago in Jeremy Tice. Right now he's at Class A Kinston. Chris Haymeyer caught up with him. Jeremy, you were called up to this team a couple of weeks ago. Take me through how that was getting called up and then uh, how you got here. Uh, it was actually, uh, I got called up after a game. Uh, they just had switched me over to first base. So they told me that, um, you know, they were going to switch me over to first base. They wanted me to play over there for a little while that I might have a chance to, you know, move up. So I was pretty excited about that and uh, played two games over there. And they, uh, Teddy Kubiak called me in there and asked me if my uh, first baseman's glove was uh, good enough to play up here. So, uh, so it was a pretty exciting night. So. That has to be one of those nights, and we don't talk about it a lot, but whenever when you're called in to the manager's office for a one-and-one, -one, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a little help, sometimes you don't know what's going to happen. So I imagine the heart kind of goes into the throat until you hear what he's saying. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, he had told me that when I got in there that he wanted to check out my glove because I just got the first baseman's glove a day prior. So he just, you know, he wanted to check out the glove and see how it was, and uh, he totally surprised me when I got in there. So, uh, but it was a great feeling. I'll never forget it, and uh, hopefully I'll get a couple more of those. Jeremy, now uh, you were with Lake County for the majority of the first half and then into the second half, all of the first half. It had to be a wonderful experience. You guys basically going wire to wire as division winners. What was so special about that team winning the first half? Uh, I just think that, um, you know, everybody had the same mindset. You know, we just came to the ballpark every day and just did our jobs and we did it well. Um, you know, not to take away anything that, you know, any other teams do, but it's just uh, we kind of have a, we had a good camaraderie on that team. and. Um, you know, we uh, we had a perfect, you know, match between uh, pitching and hitting and uh, just everything worked out for us. So Teddy Kubiak, you mentioned that name and some K-Tribe fans may remember that name. Of course, Kubiak was a, uh, a manager here for the Kinston Indians back at the beginning of uh, last decade. Teddy is a baseball guy. He has World Series rings in the 60s and 70s with the A's. How is he as a manager some 10 years past when we knew him back here? Uh, <clears throat> he's a great manager, really old school. Uh, doesn't really talk that much unless something needs to be said, um, you know. But he's he's really one on one with the players, um, you know. Always always talking to them about uh, what they could do different. Always tries to take, even <clears throat> if the situation's bad, tries to take out the positive. But um, you know, just just an old school guy. So it's a fun experience now because because of call ups in the middle of the year and what happens. You're at a new team, but you look around and you see a lot of familiar faces. Literally half of this roster started the year at Lake County, won the first half, and now you guys are looking for a second half championship. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, you get get down here and you see some new faces, but it also helps when you, you know, a lot of some a lot of the pitchers that were there with us, and then some of the position players now. So um, yeah, definitely, it's it, it's a good feeling knowing that you know some of the guys and you've played with them before. You uh, had to suffer through a very cold beginning of the year up in uh, Lake County, where they come from, is just uh, outside of Cleveland, so it's very cold, and just when the weather starts getting nice into the 70s and 80s, you're put down to the oven again. Yeah, it's, it, it was definitely a change, definitely a change, because, I mean, you go from about 70 with very little humidity every day to about 95, 96 with 100% humidity. So um, <clears throat> it's definitely a change, but uh, it's, a good, it's a good feeling, feeling at home. You continued your baseball career uh, in the South, College of Charleston. That is a baseball power that people really know around these parts East Carolina University big baseball school around here do well you guys seem to meet up at each other in regionals and different sort of tournaments and that how is baseball down in uh, Charleston where you guys have really built a consistent winner um, I actually didn't know that baseball was such a big sport in South Carolina really? um, you know I always thought it'd been a you know a big sport in, in Georgia but you know it's, it's still a football state yeah. 
Um, but once I got there at College of Charleston, you realize exactly how big a baseball really is there, you know, with Coastal and College of Charleston and then Clemson and South Carolina all in so, you know, so close with each other. But it's really a big uh, baseball state and people love their baseball. So, I mean, it was, it was a great opportunity and, and I'll never forget it. And of course, that conference is up and coming as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this this year they uh, put more teams into the regional than uh, they ever have. So uh, hopefully they'll you know keep improving and we'll you know put more teams in there and keep growing as a conference. Those are the words of uh, Jeremy Tice, one of the newest members of the K Tribe. Uh, at first base is where you'll see him most of the time. All right, Chris, Jeremy, thanks. Uh, another kid to keep an eye on, Jay. We got him in the sixth round in 2008 and. You know, he could be a guy kind of like a Jared Getter, who in 07 had an outstanding year and that he was down in 08 and 09, mainly because of injury. But right now, Jared Getter has made himself the next third base prospect to be called up. Yeah, Tice has done a very good job. And, and you look at a kid right now, drafted in 08, he's right where he needs to be right now. He's at Kenson right now, and he's moving up very progressively like he needs to. And that's all you can ask for is if you stay healthy and you're able to put up numbers, the, the Indians are going to find a place for you to play, whether it's in AA, AAA, or even at the big league level. All right, still more to come here with Indians Minor League Magazine. We'll check the standings, and we'll also see where the teams are uh, schedule-wise. Take a look here at the mascot race at Canal Park. I think that kid's going to beat the mascot. It looks good. I hope so. He, does, he never wins. <laughs> we'll be back. Stay tuned. Don't forget, coming up this Monday live here on Sports Time Ohio, Triple A baseball for you at 7 o'clock. Check out some of these prospects the Indians have at the Triple A level. It's the Toledo Mudhens against the Columbus Clippers, an all Ohio battle. That's on STO next Monday. Here's the standings for you. Columbus, uh, their, their lead is going down, Jay. I don't know. They, they got to keep playing well here. Then you've got Akron, Kinston, Lake County, and Mahoning Valley. Of course, Lake County's already qualified for the postseason. Here's the schedule. Columbus home for Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, and Toledo. Akron is at Reading, then home for Harrisburg. Kinston is home for Potomac, then uh, heads to Myrtle Beach. Lake County home for Bowling Green, then at Dayton. And Mahoning Valley is home for Batavia. Then they head to State College Wednesday. Ed O'Neill night. Get your Polk High t-shirt. Ed O'Neill night. Great promotion in East Woodfield. Some great stuff right there. And I'm fortunate enough that I'm going to be doing the radio for that game, so it'll be wow. fun. it'll be a fun night. You gonna dress like Ed O'Neill? No, I don't know if I am or not. Oh, yeah, he's on radio. We'll never know. All right, that's a wrap here for Indians Minor League Magazine. For Jason Stanford, I'm Al Pulaski. Don't forget to find us on Facebook. We love to add you there when we can. And take a look around the four-pound Euro eating contest at Eastwood Field. It looks good, but man, that's a lot of food. <laughs>